Hello everybody and welcome to the second video stream for Dungeons 2, or a little game here. Uh, my name is Chris, I'm the producer for Dungeons 2 and I will guide you through this video as best as I can. Um, today I want to show you uh, something that we haven't shown before, uh, which is the second faction, the Demons faction uh, in Dungeons 2. Um, we do this by starting a little skirmish uh, gameplay here, which is just access like this. And uh, we have some skirmish maps here that we can choose from, but uh, we'll stay with the old mine. Um, and of course we can choose uh, by uh, using the Horde faction or the Demons faction or just go random. Uh, but today, as we want to show you the Demons, let's go with the Demons and with some devilish demon-like purple here. Uh, you can also choose to uh, you can choose uh, with how much gold you start the game, which we will put to a lot because uh, we want to uh, get ahead quickly here. And you can choose which dungeon level you start from, which kind of like is the tech level in other RTS games. There, uh, you can also uh, choose to uh, play each skirmish map as an endless game, which kind of lets you play and build your dungeon as long as you want uh, without any set goals. Otherwise each skirmish uh, map is uh, finished when you evilize uh, all of the overworld sectors, which this map has six of, and um, by killing all enemies of course. Uh, okay, let's jump into the game. So the demons are uh, pretty much, they, they don't handle very differently from the Horde faction, but they play a little different in that they require a little more micromanagement and they are a little more dependent on magic and sacrifice and stuff like that if you're into that. So, um, you may be familiar with this. This is the throne room. It looks a little different than uh, with the with the Horde faction, but you'll recognize it from the other videos. Um, the demons actually bring units into this world with some kind of portal, organic magic portal thingy uh, like this. And the way they do it is pretty similar to that of the uh, Horde faction with their bottomless pit though. Uh, you just click on one of the minions that you want and uh, the counterpart of um, the the snots in the horde faction is actually the, the servant here, the minion. Um, just click on that, and then it takes a little while for them to pass over from the the realm of the elder god or whatever to this world here, and then uh, they'll arrive in this world out of this portal. See, ching, there, yeah, there comes Archer, uh, and of course you see uh, the ultimate evil, or as we call it with the with the demons faction, the chaotic evil is kind of hanging around here in his throne room, uh, being admired by his uh, minions. Here's a minion. So the minions are uh, pretty much similar to uh, the the snots in the horde faction. They do all the dirty work here, it's like uh, digging out gold, digging out new rooms, um, uh, and some other cool stuff like sacrificing themselves for the bigger cause that you will see later on. Uh, for you, all you guys that uh, have never watched a video for Dungeons 2, uh, first of all, shame on you. Second, um, the, th the the way this game works is pretty similar to all, to the, the classic dungeon management games. You dig out gold, you dig out rooms, you build new rooms, and you hire new units, and then you use them to tada, um, evilify everything around you and the overworld, which is pretty new in this game compared to other uh, dungeon management games. So, uh, first of all we need some gold, although we have a lot of gold because I have uh, set the starting gold to a lot, which is actually a lot. Um, so, let's build a treasury. You build rooms by actually just painting, kind of painting the floor um, beneath them. So I just paint this room as a treasury and uh, the minions will bring the gold there. You see that this uh, tile in the middle, it's a rich gold vein. Rich gold veins have 10,000 gold, while normal gold veins have 75 gold. Um, so they last a little longer. So now we have a treasury, let's build some more rooms. And of course, let's get some more minions so we can build a bigger dungeon here. And 
get ahead more payday. quickly. Payday. Oh yeah, payday. Payday is actually uh, yeah kind of a bad day for me because all my my minions that are getting paid will wander to the treasury then and get their pay. But uh, the minions are so happy to work for me that they don't get any pay. Did I mention that you can slap minions? No. Now you know. Um, let's see. So let's build some more rooms. Uh, I also want to point your attention to the cool ghostly pickaxe here that they are using to dig out the, the underworld here. Very nice. Very nice detail. Um, let's see. We are in need of kind of a big room here because you see all of your units except for the minions here, have uh, wants and needs. Uh, and whereas the the Horde faction had the need for beer, uh, they were very thirsty, um, the Demon faction actually uh, does not rely on such worldly endeavors. They uh, want to be admired. And for that you need a Hall of Admiration. The Hall of Admiration is where demons go to be admired by the, the minions. Um, and of course, uh, because this is uh, yeah, w one of the, the normal rooms in the game, you need uh, an interaction gimmick, uh, as we call it. And the interaction gimmick here is the admiration podium. So the admiration podium is placed here, and uh, demons will actually wander here and be admired in this room. Uh, I'll show you how this works later on. Though. Let's get our first um, our first fighting unit. Our first fighting unit in the demons is the mistress. Uh, costs 300 gold and a little while to pass over from the, the realm of the elder god into this um, into this area and once she's here she will happily swing her whip at everything that moves and I'll show you uh, what she can do ding so this is Suki Suki is a mistress. Uh, she likes uh, to walk around in skimpy clothes, but also she likes to swing her whip at everything that moves and seems kind of good and nice. Um, as every fighting unit, Suki has uh, has an experience level in battle and an experience level in production. So each unit actually levels up in um, in their work area and in a fighting area. So, for example, uh, Suki is pretty good in swinging the whip, so she'll uh, she'll be good at um, at close combat fighting, hey and uh, she is actually very good at, at uh, telling other people what to do. Not surprisingly, though, um, so she'll level up by uh, yelling at other uh, at other uh, working units. Okay. So while our minions go on here, let's see, Su Suki also have, has some more needs. So let's explain the, the needs a little bit more. Yeah, like, um, she wants to work. Uh, so she wants to torture other units. That, that is pretty normal for demons though. She wants uh, some wages. That is where the payday comes in. Um, she wants to be admired, um, for which she goes to the admiration podium here. Um, and of course, as she walks along, uh, she works long hours. She gets boredom, so uh, she gets bored, um, which you can uh, counter with the torture devices later on. And then, if all of those needs are not met, uh, she will get angry and she will walk through the throne room and kind of go and strike. So you will not get any more uh, production from her. Okay, this is Suki. Let's see, uh, we have this blue thingy here coming out of the ground uh, that we've dig up, uh, dug up. That is actually a mana crystal and uh, we can use this mana crystal by building a shadow chamber on top of it. Oh, you see. And the shadow chamber actually unlocks the uh, shadow lurker. The shadow lurker is uh, the mana gathering unit uh, with the demon faction. So as soon as uh, the shadow lurker comes in here, he'll walk right into the shadow chamber and start um, getting mana for us. 
but actually Shadow Chamber also is used to uh, to up the production, uh, the population points, uh, for which we have already have 40 because uh, I have upped the throne room level to level 3 when I started this game. Uh, and also where spells are unlocked. So I have unlocked most of the spells uh, already because I started on uh, dungeon level 3. Uh, but some of them uh, may st still be unlocked then. Um, both faction, the Horde and the Demons, have uh, unique spells. Uh, s uh, some of them are pretty similar because you need uh, a spell to summon your uh, to summon your units back to the throne room. But um, most of the spells are pretty unique. Okay, let's get some more minions here together. Let's make our admiration hall a little bit bigger so uh, more units can be admired simultaneously and then let's build a new room let's build the spider den payday oh nice payday again so you see Suki and Bliss and Phoebe will be walking to the Oh yeah, to my throne room and get their, their pay here. So, the spider's den. The spider's den uh, has the, the larva as an interaction module, interaction gimmick. And this is actually where new rooms, traps, doors uh, are, are researched. And uh, it actually unlocks the, uh, the infested, which are kind of like spider demons. Um, once the infested here is has passed over from the demon world to our world here. Um, he will walk over to the spider den and start producing spider eggs that you can then use to unlock new rooms or to build traps or to build doors um, or to research new stuff. So where's the infested? There, Kaligrak here uh, is our infested and he'll happily start uh, spitting his acid puke at the larva which is somehow produces spider eggs for what reason either. Um, let's make this a little bit bigger you see every production room has uh, a certain efficiency like, this is an efficiency efficiency um, the efficiency rises if uh, the room is built in a certain way so uh, the room is most effective if it has only one entrance and uh, is walled in from all of the sides so you see that this is actually an open corner of the room so it has only 49 percent efficiency if i now close this gap it will rise to 99 percent efficiency you can actually um bring this over 100 percent efficiency by uh, having your units um, uh, upgrade the walls uh, and stuff like that uh, also uh, so the efficiency actually uh, influences how well uh, units can work in there and also uh, the, the size of the room also um, determines how many spider eggs in this case can be stored here. Since the, the last time I showed you the game we have made some, some small improvements. For example, um, you can now see how many of the toolboxes or the spider eggs are reserved for traps and doors. So if, when you build a, a door or a trap or you maybe want to repair a trap, then some spider eggs may be reserved. And that wasn't pretty clear in the last build, but now uh, you can see this pretty much instantly. Uh, okay. Okay. Now I've unlocked pretty much all of the units in. Uh, uh, only the Infernal is still left. It's payday. So let's build a new room for the inter Infernal, um, which is the uh, which is the. Let's see, it's the Hellforge. The Hellforge is actually used to uh, to research upgrades for all of your units. Da -da -da. It is the equivalent to the Chaos Forge, of course, um, of the the Horde faction. Da -da -da -da. It needs a certain size. So uh, actually, all the rooms in Dungeons 2 can be built. Uh, um, as, as as you want it. So there is no certain size of, of the room um, that you need to adhere to. 
the only thing that you need to adhere to is the uh, the size of the production gimmick so we ha now have the skull forge here that you need f uh, for um, for the health forge and the skull forge actually needs three by three uh, a room that is three by three big so that is the only rule that is actually there by building your rooms every other thing is really dependent on efficiency and and stuff like that so we want you to build your room just uh, your dungeon just as you like so now I've built the health forge and the, uh, the school forge in it I can now uh, get an infernal down here so he of course also needs some time to pass over from the demon world to this world um, so we can take our time a little bit and make the admiration room, uh, admiration wall a little bit bigger here as well, maybe. Kaligrak should go to work. Bam. Okay, and maybe get some more room for a another room here. And another room there. What? Okay. Okay, the infernal should now be coming into this world. Here we go. Ignis McKellen here uh, is happily walking into uh, the Hellforge. And the Hellforge lets you like uh, research improvements for all of your units. Uh, research new spells for example and stuff like that. And new skills for each unit as well. Um, and Infernals are actually also the tank units so they will be good to stand in the front line where others deal long distance damage or something like that. Let's make the Ration Hall a little bit bigger as well. Bam. Okay, so we have this, we have that. And there should be some new rooms being built down here by Smithers and Delbert. Come on, Smithers! A little bit faster. Okay. The creatures of the ultimate evil suddenly developed a craving for chocolate. Mmm, chocolate. Get some more minions. And here's some as well. Okay. So you see, on Throne Letter 3 I've pretty much already discovered all of the rooms and uh, most of the upgrades already. Uh, but you can still like research some new traps and stuff like that as well. Like the frame, flame trap here. Yeah, let's, let's research the flame trap. Um, traps are pretty important because time by time some of the, the enemy units will walk into your dungeon as well. So you might want to stay clear of them. Ah, now we have some place for a new room here. Let's see, what can we build? Um, we have built all of the production rooms. So, let's build a summoning chamber. A summoning chamber lets us upgrade our units. Um, but it needs a pentagram. And a pentagram needs 1000 gold. So, we let Wilkins here and some of the brothers uh, get some more gold for us. Oh, of course they're walking here. Right. So in, in Dungeons 2 you can actually upgrade each unit two times so um, each unit has has two distinctly unique upgrades uh, like the mistress will upgrade uh, into a succubus um, and into a, thir a third level as well uh, and I'll show you both uh, shortly once oh yeah now we have enough gold for the pentagram the pentagram is actually where, where units are Upgraded. So, but now the pentagram is actually inactive. Uh, it needs a sacrifice to work. 
So it needs one of our servants. Let's uh, get rid of Nestor here. Nestor will be our our thing here to sacrifice. Throw him onto the pentagram and he'll happily sacrifice himself for the greater cause. It's and, payday. And he'll be like devoured by the Elder Gods or whatever lives beneath that dark deep hole there. So now the pentagram is active and we'll choose Phoebe to be the, the first one to be upgraded here. So we'll just shove her onto that and then uh, she'll like make a, a ritual and if you click on the summoning chamber you see that she'll be upgraded into a, a succubus and that of course takes some time but it also looks pretty nice the way that she's upgraded um, yeah let's wait for that to be done and um, we can also build a yes a pit of evil which will actually help us to uh, resuscitate our uh, uh, units once they fall on the overworld um, so they will be uh, they will be brought back to life by the pit of evil once they fall on the overworld so they will be never really lost although of course it takes some time for them to be uh, resurrected okay so Phoebe is just about done being upgraded to a succubus here. So, sexy succubus here. Um, she has wings, uh, which I was told is very important for succubus. Um, and uh, she can actually, um, she can actually use uh, bewitch, the bewitch spell, to bring some of the enemy units uh, to your side, which is a pretty cool skill, I must say. Let's build some more treasure here because we need some more gold. And uh, let's let's sacrifice Passepartout here so we can upgrade some more units. For example, our Shadow Lurker Bliss here. So Bliss will be upgraded to a Mind Flayer, which is a very cool long distance damage unit. You can see that. He's been upgraded to. He will be upgraded to a mind flayer here. Let's see how that works out. So, um, uh, whereas the demon, uh, no, the horde uh, dungeons will be outfitted by your units bit by bit um, with like metal or wood and stuff like that. The the demon, um, the the demon uh, dungeons will kind of organically grow spikes and tentacles and stuff from from the throne room outwards uh, which kind of gives your dungeon a very unique look now. okay the mind flayer should be done in yeah a short while a short while though uh, we'll need some more shadow lurkers though for, for that payday <coughs> and we may be able to some stuff as well. Okay, we can we can set up some traps though. Traps work uh, pretty much as you would imagine them. Um, you just uh, use, for example, a giant tentacle trap, and this is, has a three by three radius, so you can only place it when there is three by three around it. But most of the uh, traps have a one by one radius, so you can just place them anywhere. Um, you place this, and it kind of like creates a hologram of uh, the of the trap and the minions will then get some spider eggs to here and will then start building up the trap there so delbert has taken up the task of carrying one of the spider eggs to where the trap should be built and then starting to build the trap and um, the minions will also keep uh, keep track of which uh, which traps are being damaged and should need repair so they you don't uh, have to keep an eye on which trap is uh, is damaged uh, they'll they'll keep track of that okay so the mind flayer has been upgraded here so now we have a mind flayer which is a cool like long distance damage unit um, and that is actually the, the upgrade of the shadow lurker um, we can also upgrade the next unit here. Let's let's get some more minions so we can sacrifice whatever we want. So um, activate the portal again and upgrade the fire demon like the Ignis McKellen here. 
let's get him onto here and he will upgrade as well. Oops, so there was a small hiccup, but um, Ignis McKellen actually has already upgraded here. That is pretty nice. And he's been upgraded to a Gargoyles. Gargoyles are very cool damage dealers. Um, and uh, yeah, they uh, are pretty good. So, so we have some, some, uh, some stats here about each unit. So Gargoyles are armored units. Let's see, they have good armor here. Um, they are massive units um, and they are melee fighters. And they're actually very effective against other melee fighters. So you can uh, pretty much outfit your your army with uh, with everything depending on um, on how good each unit is against other units. Let's see if we can bring one of the units up to the third uh, area. Let's start with Phoebe, who has been upgraded to a um, a succubus from the mistress, um, but now she will upgrade a second time and uh, let's see yeah this will take some time but uh, she'll transform into a nice queen there let's get some more units here and prepare for our first assault on the overworld Ta -da. get some more gold although we already have plenty of that but you can never have enough gold right um, and we can also let's see where have we some we have some place here uh, let's build a something that's very cool for all of you uh, the torture chamber the torture chamber is where all the demons go to have fun there is some uh, unfortunate peasant here um, and Maleficent here knows what she wants to do with him whip it good so the actually the the torture chamber is where demons go to uh, get rid of their boredom and it also heals them a little bit. Um, yes. So, you know, see, Phoebe has upgraded a second time and is now in Dark Empress, uh, which can use it's powerful magic payday. spells against their enemies. Uh, pretty cool. Very, very cool. Also, our tentacle trap here is now uh, active. For all you lovers of uh, Japanese literature, um, let's set some fire traps um, here as well. Yes, good. So let's get. S oh, yeah, we need some more, some more minions here as well, because I've sacrificed all of them, most all of them. But Archer still left, right? Hey Archer, wanna take a trip to the pentagram here? Yep, there you go. Um, so let's upgrade one of the. Let's upgrade Suki as well. So we have all three forms of uh, the lust demons, as we call them here. Okay, nice. Get some more infernals here as well. And. Maybe research the meteor spell. See, all the demons go here to be admired, which is very nice. Black Adder here does his best at admiring those demons, which they kind of enjoy for whatever reason. Um. Okay. The next Inferno might be ready soon, and Suki is nearly done being upgraded to another Succubus. I think we may be able to start our War for the Overworld shortly. Let's get another Spider Demon here as well, soon. Oh yeah, Suki has upgraded. Nice. Set another trip. Oh, no spider eggs. Need more spider demons. There's a fire trap as well. Okay. One 
more upgrades and we're set to go. Let's take Adan and uh, let. Oh! Seems Black Adder didn't want to be sacrificed. Tough luck. Oh, here we go. Did you know that Realm Forge Studios has brought out some other successful games? You should at least buy and play Dungeons and Seville. Yes, you should. Talk about pathetic, surreptitious advertising. Enough to make you vomit. <laughs> okay, as soon as this new mind flyer is here, we will make. We will start our attack, I think. Hopefully, no one has arachnophobia. A spider nest has been discovered. Oh, interesting. Um, time by time, there are some rooms that you can discover uh, in the underworld. For example, this room that has a rich gold vein, but also some spiders here that we need to get rid of. So, we'll kind of just take some of our units and uh, let them push them into this room. And they will start attacking the spiders and get rid of those. This spider plague, so we can. Um, yeah, the, that shouldn't be a big, big problem. But we can now use this additional gold. And also, we have found uh, a perk. The perk knows uh, uh, where to hit, partially ignores armor, which is pretty cool for Ignis McKellen, I think. So these perks, each unit can only use one perk, but um, it makes it pretty unique in that it gets a unique name, so Ignis McKellen knows where to hit. Um, and it of course gives it um, uh, a certain unique skill, like partially ignore armor. Okay, the second mind flayer has been upgraded. Um, and I think we can start our attack on the overworld, let's see. Take this one and this one and where are the other ones start? Phoebe take Glinda and Arian and Sally Mark. Um and then we actually I can show you one of the cool parts of Dungeons 2. Um so once you want to raid the overworld you just uh take your units and drop them uh onto the exit and they will come out on the other side. And now this game switches actually to a normal RTS um, controls like you would have in normal RTS, fantasy RTS games. And you can use skills, the skills of your units, and you can actually attack uh, your enemies and take the fight to them instead of just lingering around in your dungeon waiting for them to destroy you. It's payday. Of course they won't take this so lightly, so um, they have like these spawner buildings and once you destroy them the area around them actually evil fights as we call it so you we want you to have uh, this really cool feeling when you evil fight the overworld like you discover all kinds of new things there are new paths that open up then now there's a like some some wolves that attacked us here and we can find a, a healing potion here once our units would be would be damaged then uh, they would be healed now, and uh, of course, as this sec uh, this um, this area, this map has uh, six sectors. There's of course more to evilify here. Let's take a stroll to the west here, and there is this lush green meadow, and there is actually a family of unicorns here that uh, we need to slay. But we are strong enough at this point that we can just march on here. Uh, please keep in mind that. It's pretty easy for me to um, to kill everything here because I have started in dungeon level 3 but if you would start on dungeon level 1 it would be uh, very hard for you to get through here so you could do this bit by bit only. Um, there are also perks on the overworld for example regeneration rate plus 1 which is pretty cool. Let's take this with uh, Senemalek. You see this area has also evil fight um, leaving the uh, like these here the unfortunate ones that were swimming in the lake uh, now in burning acid. Very nice. 
and this cool little graveyard that it has developed here. Um, next area, there is a bard here and two pixies that will heal the other units and they also might be able to take over our units which you can see by the, the small heart over them um, and they, then they will fight against my units but the, I have managed to kill them very quickly so um, that didn't pose a big problem but with a smaller group it might have posed a problem. There is another perk called the Energetic, which is pretty cool for y units that use energy. Um, for example, the Succubus. Yes, that's pretty good. So, once over this bridge, this area will be a little bit harder. There will be Amazon Princesses here, Amazon Warriors, and they are tough to kill, but I think I will be able to get by, get past them. Yes, the, yes, that should be, that should be doable. The Pixie didn't pose much of a threat, and the Amazon Warriors, they are good fighters, but not as good as mine. Okay, now this has developed into a nice, cozy, dark little mine. Um, and there is actually an unfortunate fella here turning the wheel uh, Payday. For, his, uh, for his already deceased uh, colleague there. Uh, I cannot actually get into the into the city as it is now because it's locked up and uh, I don't have a key and I actually can't destroy the the portal from here I can just shoot at the the arrow throwing towers here but I can't shoot the the um, the door here uh, which is mainly because you can't really click on it um, so there might be another way in let's see there is another path down here um, there's another path down here, let's see. There is a small alliance camp here. Oh, with a, uh, with, ooh, that is, that is nice. Um, and there are some, uh, these units actually will root my units so they can't move anymore. So I should be, get, get lost in, uh, get rid of them quickly. And then I can, uh, uh I can... Oh, uh, I've lost my Dark Empress, but that's okay. Uh, she will be resurrected in my dungeon. Um, and the Dwarven King is down as well. Uh, let's get rid of the Spawner Building as well. And then... Yes, very nice. That's it. There's another perk here called with his neck lock. Uh, chance of critical hits plus 15. Hmm, let's see. Critical hits in long distance is pretty cool. Let's get this to Blissey. Uh, you see that I've lost my uh, my Dark Empress, but she will be resurrected here. Yes, you see Phoebe, the Dark Empress, is being resurrected here. That will take some time, but uh, she'll be fine. Um, you may have noticed that you can switch between the over and the underworld uh, instantly. Like, there is, that is pretty seamless, and you also need that. In more hectic uh, areas, you will be notified by... Uh, by events in, in the event lock on the right uh, hand side of the screen if something happens in your dungeon, like if you're being attacked or something like that. So, um, the attack on the city will be now... Th and the door is open now because I've destroyed the other camp, but um, there will be more units waiting in there and I am not quite sure if I will be able to to overcome them. And of course, I don't want to spoil the rest of the map for you, so feel free to check out this map and the Demon Faction in Dungeons 2 once it releases on 24th of April. Bye!